It's anybody's guess. While Tom Murray heads the legal attack against Ford, the scientific assault starts here in Pittsburgh, home to an electronics expert called Sam Ciro. He's a highly qualified forensic engineer who's testified in dozens of trials about electrical systems, including most of the Ford cases. And he believes the root of the problem is the huge amount of technology in modern cars. Electronics are very susceptible to their environment, and that's physical environment and electrical environment. In order for electronics to work, they, you want to make them smaller and smaller so they don't take up a lot of room. But at the smaller you make them, the less able they are to get rid of their own heat. And the more susceptible they come to the environmental heat and the dirt and the moisture and anything that can happen. One of the worst environments in the world is under the hood of a car. There's nothing radical about his theory. All electric motors throw out random signals or spikes of voltage. It's well accepted these spikes can affect other electrical devices. Down in front here, you have a number of different motor type devices. You have a starter motor and you have the air conditioning assembly, all of which are generating spikes. And you, so you're saying they're generating spikes as part of their normal operation. Right. And these, these spikes somehow have the ability to interfere with the cruise control. That's correct. That's exactly what they do. Sam Ciro reckons the cruise control can pick up a stray spike or signal and misread it as a command to switch on, taking control of the accelerator away from the driver. But a cruise control system is designed so that the minute you step on the brake, it's supposed to disengage. Why isn't that happening here? In order for the cruise, for that brake operation to work, you have to have turned the cruise control on in the first place. Otherwise, those inputs mean nothing to it. So because you haven't, as it were, turned the cruise control on in the orthodox intended way, the ways of disengaging it don't work either. That's correct. The only true method of disengaging is to turn off the ignition. Sam Ciro says he can recreate the fault by injecting the cruise control with the same kind of electrical signal that's emitted by other components under the bonnet. So we'll let it settle out and idle. To be honest, anyone can take a couple of bits of wires and, you know, screw them together and That's create true. a fault like that. Yes. I mean, how realistic is what you've just done? How could what you have done generate itself from within the engine? Because the negative... You want to turn it off, Bill? So what I've done is, is a simulation. Remember that. It's, it's not, I'm not saying that these wires have to be stripped and you have to do this out here. Basically, in this engine compartment, there are all kinds of coils that have the ability to generate spikes. I don't know which one of these caused it, but I'm simulating a value that I know can do it. Ford calls this junk science. It says its own engineers conducted tests with electronic signals at all frequencies, but nothing interfered with the cruise control. But the one test they've never done is exactly what Sam Ciro's done. One of the problems with proving his theory is that stray signals are transient. They last a fraction of a second and leave no trace. I guess the best analogy is everybody nowadays has a computer, or at least knows about them, and your computer's working along fine, and all of a sudden it dies on you. won't do a thing. You turn it off, turn it back on, it's fine. That's a transient event. Came, it went. There's no way of knowing why it came, where it came from. It didn't damage anything, except that it shut you down. And that's what happens here. Only instead of shutting the vehicle down, it makes the vehicle go, 